Hello and welcome to the Grand Line Review, your source for everything One Piece. Today we just have a quick cover review of Volume 90, which goes on sale in Japan on September 4th. And this cover really is just a bizarre mashup of individuals representing a wide array of arcs and characters throughout the series, which really reflects the craziness that was the Reverie. As far as structure goes, it's probably one of the most uncreative covers in the series, with the kind of glass breakup effect of panels encompassing the photographic portion of Luffy's bounty poster. And I'm fairly unimpressed by this structure because if we step back two volumes to look at the cover for volume 88, it's pretty much exactly the same shattered mirror structure, only done quite literally and significantly more visually appealing. These two are just way too similar for my liking. I mean, maybe if they had 20 to 30 volumes between them, then yeah, but they only have one volume, which is 89, to separate them, which uh, isn't quite enough. I do find some of the character choices on this cover quite interesting though. For example, I'm not entirely sure why Leo warrants his own panel. He could probably have fit in with Rebecca and Man Sherry or just, you know, not being there at all. I mean, if we wanted a bit more representation from Dress Rosa, then we could have thrown in King Riku or even Viola. And if we wanted some representation from the Grand Fleet, then you sigh instead. There are also hugely important figures like King Neptune that could have taken it. In conclusion, I'll never understand Oda's obsession with the Tontata tribe. And I suppose you could say the same thing about Karu getting his own panel, but I'm not going to, because Karu is amazing and always deserves any cover space he receives. I also find Wapol's inclusion to be a peculiar choice, but with that said, I love how he is drawn. There's just something about that smarmy, open mouth smile that I can't help but be won over by his presence here. And just to quickly touch on everyone else, Vivi, Cobra, and Shirohoshi are pretty expected choices. Rob Lucci and Hattori are great to see. A smiley garp is a good garp. I don't like Sabo, but he looks undeniably cool here. And I do enjoy that Bonnie and Kuma are getting some nice focus. But there are also some pretty high profile characters involved in the Reverie arc, the entirety of which is in this one volume by the way, that seem to have been strategically left off the cover, possibly for spoiler reasons. And of course I'm talking about Shanks, Eam, and to a lesser extent perhaps even the Gorosei or the Revolutionary Commanders. Sadly without them I don't think this volume quite accurately conveys the proper weight of the Reverie arc. Looking at this cover you'd think it was just a jovial bridging arc rather than an event that will shake the world as we know it. I do really like that the Empty Throne is in the background because it adds some cool texture and depth, especially with all the swords around it. Although I do really wish that it took up the entire background rather than hard cutting two thirds of the way down the focal image, because it makes the cover feel very empty in this whole sector, and not in a good intentional negative space sort of way. It's one of those things I find really annoying that I'm sure nobody else will care about, but meh. The final thing I want to highlight is rather ironically the muted maroon selected as the dominant color of the volume. I usually look at One Piece as a very vibrant series, but the maroon is quite nice and unique, which is difficult to do with a dominant color after 89 other volumes. It also works really well for the Reverie arc because maroon is a very professional color. It's what you'd expect to see in a lot of swish company board meetings in the form of tables and chairs and pens and ties and, and you know, whatever else greedy people who ruin the economy for personal gain use. But that pretty much does it for the cover of volume 90. If you enjoyed this video, then feel free to like, favorite, or subscribe. And if you are in any way keen on supporting this independent channel, then please do check out my Patreon, Discord server, or Twitter, the links to which are in the handy description below. Finally, please do comment with your thoughts on the cover of volume 90. This has been the Grand Line Review, and I'll see you next time.